All right, I'm going to try to go over some of the important parts of the code in order to make the uh, Tico Watch 2020 work. I'm also going to try to uh, link this to uh, GitHub so you can just go get my code and then play with it yourself. It's all just stuff I cribbed from other examples anyway, so I have at it. Let's see. One of the important things to do, of course, is to set up your uh, config. You got to make sure you have CTT Go Watch. This allows access to the motor. One of these is access to the um, image display, but I'm not too sure which one. So you probably need both. And of course, you need to define the watch itself. Let's see. I, may, I put some pretty good comments in here, so this marks off the sections. Some of this is for the power management, so you can press the uh, button and turn it on to sleep mode. The real-time clock setup is taken from the Batman example. This is very important. To start with, you, have to need, to, you need to declare all of your images ahead of time. These are all the images used in the example. This one's a font. These ones right here are the images of the spinning head, the dork head. Uh, these one, this is the eyeball background, and then these are the eyeball parts that get replaced in the background to allow it to blink and look around. This is the small text that indicates the amount of power left. And these, of course, are the variables. Let's see, in the setup, you need to make sure you have all these little parts here. Uh, this TT Go part that happens before the arrow, you can set this to just about anything, but this is how it's going to be referenced from that point on. It's like a library linking to a library that probably links to another library, like a big pile full of Russian nesting dolls. It's very confusing. So you need to make sure that um, this statement, I usually just stick with TT Go because it's a pretty basic one. In some of the examples it says watch though, but if you go back to here you'll see that it's, they just named it watched arbitrarily and it should you could just easily say TT go. Let's see, this fires up the real-time clock, this sets up the screen. Uh, this part's for the motor. I'm having a bit of problems with the motor. In this example, the motor, the input for the motor isn't pulled very often. You're supposed to be able to tap the screen and the motor vibrates but that doesn't happen very often or hardly ever because you have to tap it at the exact moment it's actually checking and it does a lot of other stuff in the meantime. I'm sure a decent programmer knows how to get around that. Let's see, this right here is more the power stuff for checking the power on the battery as well as turning off and on the sleep mode. It's all very important. Now, uh, I'm doing everything within a task, and this watch really prefers that you stick within the task system, especially since this is using the LVGL uh, code setup, and they want everything done within a task. So at the start of setup, or at the end of doing all the basic stuff of the setup, everything that would normally be in the loop is instead inside of this task. And if you go all the way down to the bottom, we end setup by ending the task. So this is like the other side of the task. And then when we do the loop, we call task handler, and this executes everything that would have been done up above. And of course, uh, it does all this while waiting for that button to get pressed. And when the button gets pressed, it jumps out of this while loop, and jumps down here and does the power off thing and sets it up so that it can be turned back on. So that's how the power management uh, sleep mode stuff is done. Let's see, getting back to the graphics. Graphics are usually called like this. You set up an object, then you set an image to the object of one of the things that you declared earlier, which is written out right here, and then you give it some place to be. Now, if you're going to swap out the objects arbitrarily, what you want to first do is declare the object, then do all of the code that does the swapping, which is a little tiny bit right here in the middle, and then at the very end, you start giving its placement on where it's going to be on the screen. 
So it's always three lines, but if you're going to mess around with those, make sure the only one you mess around with is the middle line declaring the image. But this one has to be set outside of an if statement. If it is set inside of an if statement, it seems like it just doesn't work. I'm sure somebody knows why. This right here handles the time that was shown, which is a series of labels that are attached to other parts of the graphic. In this case, this is all attached to the background, so the part of the eye that blinks and moves around actually is written over the top of this. That's the reason why the text has to be pushed up, up and out of the side. You can put the text over the top of the middle by changing what it's aligned to, which is right here. In this case, it's aligned to image one. I had it aligned to image three, which is the blinking part of the eye. This big thing floats around inside of the center of this thing. But then, of course, that meant that the number had to always be in the middle, and I wanted the number to the side, so I moved it to the background. Let's see, this right here is the section. Same kind of thing. It's another label attached to an image that lists the amount of power left in the battery. Now this stuff here adds all of the movement for the dork head. I randomize its direction a little bit, make sure that it bounces off the sides. Now this here switches through the images that allow the dork head to rotate. This part down here is the other rotation, clockwise, counterclockwise rotation. This part's the scale that makes it move in, makes it look like it moves in and out of the frame. And at the end is the um, part for the motor, but this isn't really set up right. This needs to be done differently, and I'm not too sure how to do it. Because it's doing so much graphic writing, it's not paying attention to when the pin, basically the touch screen is hit, so it doesn't always see this part. And of course that's the end of setup, that's the end of the task. And like I said, the task, all of that stuff, is done right here every time you call the task handler. This part is inside of the loop. So you do all your work inside of setup, instead of doing it inside of loop, and you call the task handler in the loop. So hopefully, with this and my example, you'll be able to code your own watch. Good luck. This watch is a pain in the butt to program. Now to actually make images, you'll of course need an image. JPEG I think is preferable, or a PNG with, um, you can add alpha masking to the background, which is great for elements that sit on top of other elements. Not so good, of course, if you use a background image, you get a very interesting uh, visual error if you try doing that. What you do is you uh, get your images, save them out, then go to this website here, the uh, LVG website. Choose your file, give it a name. This is the name that it will be called in the program, so make sure it's a name that's not too elaborate or too easy to forget, probably not too long. And make sure you save it to... Uh, True color with alpha, even if there's no alpha, always save it true color with alpha. C array is good. When you click on convert, you'll notice at the bottom that the image is automatically sent to you. It's in your download folder. You take the folder or you take the file out of your download folder. Let's see, this just got dumped in there. This one right here. And you take it and put it inside of your Arduino directory. Just dump it right back over there. Mine's already there, of course. And then inside of the program, do everything else that I mentioned about declaring it, showing it, etc. This website is totally free to use, and I'll link it in the description.